Today I'm chatting to, to Rihan Ulafi, who is um, a partner at Mazars. And um, we're going to be chatting about cryptocurrency. But don't switch off just yet. <laughs> this is not in your exams. There won't be a test on this. And we're not quite going to approach it from, from the direction that you might think we are. So just calm down, breathe. It'll be okay. So, <laughs> uh, so welcome. I'm, I'm really happy that you, that you made time for us this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, if you can kind of start by giving us a little bit of a background of, 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 of what you do and what you specialize in. Sure, hundred percent. Thanks, thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to, to chat to all the students and the future CEOs out there. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, my name is Vian Olifir. I'm an audit partner within Mazars uh, South Africa, situated in Cape Town. I'm also the digital asset lead for Mazars South Africa. So that essentially means I focus on um, digital assets such as cryptocurrencies. And by digital assets, cryptocurrencies becomes a, a, a fairly broad topic. That's why we prefer using the word digital assets as opposed to cryptocurrencies. Um, so I've been with <laughs> I've been with Mazars for um, 12 years now. Uh, so of course, I did my studies through uh, the University of Stellenbosch. I did my uh, postgraduate through the University of South Africa. Um, while doing my articles as well, um, oh, so it's definitely doable, um, to 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 finish off everything while doing articles. So I basically uh, complete my my three year articles. I worked in the poll office for a bit, and then I actually resigned from audit. So I resigned. I went to work for um, the Maitland's Group Private Equity and Real Estate Division, and I was right. there for a couple of months, and then I got an offer to came back, um, and I came back to Mazars, and I've been here ever since, uh, and I've. I have a bit of overseas experience. Uh, right. I worked in our New York office for uh, about six months. And I was quite fortunate enough, um, beginning of this month, I was in, in New York again for a couple of days. And I also attended the uh, Bitcoin conference in, in Miami as well. Right. Uh, um, and, and of course, uh, yeah, so, so, so my journey started as, as any normal auditor mm, going through mm. articles. Um, so there's nothing weird or funny of, of uh, the way that I, I, I went through the ropes and mm, I built my mm. career. So basically did my articles here, became audit senior, became a supervisor, became a manager, and then eventually became partner. Um, probably, I think this year, it's, it's four years ago uh, okay. in, in the Cape Town office. So, right. of course, for a lot of people that don't know Mazars, Mazars is one of the medium-sized firms. Um, but, of course, we are growing at a, at a, at a mm. very a stable and, and, and good rate. We actually obtained our first top 100 uh, listed JSE client, which is just came uh, mm -hmm. earlier this year. We do have a loss of list of clients. Um of course, international firms I mentioned. So we're operating in 90, uh, more than 90 countries and territories. And in South Africa, we've got nine offices. And okay. I think we're all about, a, 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 together, we're about 1,100 a, a uh, people okay. in, in, in South Africa altogether. Yeah. But yeah, okay. so from my perspective, I focus purely on, on, on audit side of things because I'm an audit partner and registered auditor with the RMBA. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, as I mentioned, or you mentioned, my my focus is, is cryptocurrency and digital assets, which is my real passion. It's something completely different to yes. to what we've seen in textbooks, yes. uh, what we've seen in in the industry, and it's a new and growing yes. uh, industry that requires you to take an extremely pragmatic approach in terms of applying the various accounting standards, the auditing standards, and of course your tax legislation when yeah. it comes to these types of uh, yeah. products, financial products and financial instruments. Mm. And I call them financial instruments. Of course, we're going to get down into the nitty gritty of IFRS and say exactly why it's not a financial instrument. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but with my experience that I gained in, in uh, working with private equity funds and financial uh, instruments, the cryptocurrency, it moves, it tastes, it smells, it looks like a financial instrument. It so does. it is exactly <laughs> the same as a financial it instrument. Does. Everyone's always scared of financial instruments because it's these onerous chapters in, yeah. in, the, in the IFRA standards. Yeah. And um, you think it's difficult, but not every single day you deal with a derivative financial instrument. So yeah. it is actually quite easy to audit as well. If you think of something like a manufacturing entity mm. that has stock and it has um, maybe a first in, first out and a uh, bill of ladings and and, and, yeah. and, and and those type of cost accounting uh, aspects to it. Um, financial instruments is just a hell of a lot easier you don't have to go anywhere you can literally sit in front of your computer and, yeah. and just look at the numbers and work out if everything wow. makes sense of course it also requires you reading a, through a massive amount of agreements and contracts and those yeah. things. but essentially that's where i came from from cryptocurrency i had an understanding about financial instruments okay and that was background. kind of the branch 
And then I applied that to the cryptocurrency. I saw a gap in the market probably three right. or four years ago. Spoke to my managing partner and uh, my head of audit and said, listen, you know, this is something that we can capitalize on. And then the rest from there was history. And I essentially went and I did a, a course through uh, MIT on, on blockchain and innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I'm currently doing a master's in digital assets and uh, blockchain technology. Um, also, of course, it, it's always that, that element of as a CA, you also always need to upskill yourself yeah. and constant learning yeah, uh, that yeah, just yeah. never stops. Yeah. Uh, and we're trying to, trying to make the, the world a better place in, in terms of where we're trying to bring cryptocurrency and all together. We're trying to create a safer environment. Mm-hmm. We can chat about the type of reports we, we issue to our mm-hmm. clients and also um, to the general public out there. Um, I think one of the things we don't realize as students and young professionals is that there's a good possibility, especially now, that the stuff that you're going to specialize in and do later doesn't actually exist at the moment. <laughs> you know, when you were studying, there was no such thing as cryptocurrency. Right? <laughs> Correct. And if, if there was, I would have invested in it back then. Yeah, but, uh... someone had have just told me. <laughs> Somebody, let me know. You know, um, so, and, and, and for me, you know, the stuff that I'm doing is not, was not even close on my radar and the technology that we have now allows me you know, to, to, to teach and lecture and do the stuff that I do while I'm sitting on the other end of the world, literally. So do you feel that your qualification process that you're studying prepared you for making that shift into something that didn't exist while you were studying? So probably if I think when cryptocurrency came around, I had a, well, I think the, the Bitcoin white paper was released in 2009. Um, so I think that was I was still at varsity back then. So at that point in stage, of course, it was uh, wasn't known or anything no, no. what to expect. But I think the the, the studies that you do do it, it, it does give you a base level to work off. Hmm. And of course, when you when you the first day of articles, when you step into an audit firm, when you're going in practice or out of practice or whatever the case may be, the first day you step into any work, hmm. you don't know what the hell is going on. You've got this theoretical knowledge of how things should work but from a practical point of view that's where you essentially start coloring Mm. in and you start to understand and i think to a certain extent that's also extremely important that when you make the decision in terms of where do you want to do your articles that you make the right decision in terms of what you want to achieve and where you want to end up and what knowledge you want to gain Mm. throughout because i can say articles is articles wherever you do it but Mm. there is a clear distinction between where you go Uh, Mm. if you're going to a small firm in in somewhere rural whatever you'll Mm. probably be dealing with certain type of clients and um, and, and a certain type of uh, partners that you'll deal with mm. on that side. If you've got a medium-sized firm, such as we're dealing with Mazar, so you've got the whole array. You've got your smaller clients, you've got your listers, you've got the in-between, uh, so it's got a good mm. mix. Um, the larger uh, uh, um, firms, of course, um, they've also got a good mix, more focused towards the, the large listers and those mm. types of entities. Um, but of course, you need to end up and, and decide where you want to be. Of course, I'm very grateful that I ended up in Mazar, so I could get experience with the yeah. listings as well and, and realize that's an uh, area I don't want to be involved in. I'm, I don't want to be involved in those technical, um, mm. well, the technicality of, of certain elements of listings, but also the pressure that goes along mm. with that. And that, that's just the area mm. I didn't want to be involved in at the end of the day. But you need to, to find a firm that suits you so you can get a, a taste of an array of things that you want to yeah. do, be it if you want to stay in audit or you or you want yeah. to move out in audit. But I think back, back to going through the ropes so you you go through the ropes you've got your your your, your qualifications i've got your degree you got your postgraduate you do your uh, your board one your board two and that but that's more maybe from a practical point as, as opposed to accumulating knowledge mm. so the important thing and i and i always say this to the trainees when they start articles with us your, your training contract is going to be what you make of it mm. i'm not here to to make you a ca at the end of the day you're mm. here to make yourself a ca mm. so it depends on the amount of effort that you put into um into your training contract so if you just want to do the bare minimum to get by you'll walk out of here with a bare minimum just to get you by and, and get you into the next job where i'm hoping you'll 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 obtain the necessary uh, skills uh, from that perspective but if you really want to go go out and, and i think this is quite phenomenal about about if i'm calling it uh, uh, articles and, and becoming a chartered accountant in south africa is you've got this you've got this opportunity of three years to work 
alongside chartered accountants or future chartered accountants mm. to work for chartered accountants, mm. to have clients as chartered accountants, and to speak to the directors and CEOs and CFOs of these businesses and pick their brain in mm. terms of what they're trying to achieve, what problems are they trying yeah. to solve. And, and that's a yeah. lot of what I'm seeing in the, yeah. in the fintech space with cryptocurrency. They are trying to solve problems at the end of the day. And I mean, that that's that phenomenal experience that you that you are trying to look for. And never in your life, again, would you be put in this situation with mm-hmm. dealing with these vast amount yeah. of clients within a three-year period and to accumulate knowledge. And of course, you'll come to the end of your articles. And I remember um, when I think when I left for that brief period of time going to Maiden, I sent my email uh, greeting anyone saying goodbye. And I said to, to the first year trainees, you'll be surprised with the amount of experience that you acquire over the next three years if you look back. And a lot yeah. of the years actually come to that, that end of, of the training contract and they look back and they geez, I've learned a hell of a lot. Yeah. But in myself saying in audit as well, when I became a senior, I look back, geez, I've learned a hell of a lot. When I became a supervisor, yeah. when I became mm-hmm. a manager, then you, you, when you become a manager, you think, right, I'm ready to become a partner now. <laughs> the younger generation wants to be the CEO short of coming out of articles, but oh, no. then you think you're ready to become a partner and then you become a senior manager. Like, geez, I don't know there was that much to it because then you yeah, start yeah, looking yeah. from a business perspective. Yeah, and a leadership perspective. Stuff. Yeah, and a business like financial budgets, you know, go to find yeah. clients, you know, marketing, There's a lot of elements yeah. in, in, into playing that. And now, now I'm, I'm, I'm a partner and looking back, it's like, geez, like, I don't know. I, this, oh, I'm not sure if you've seen that graph and it has that little pie graph and, it's, and it says there, and excuse my friends, but shit you didn't know, you didn't yeah. know. And, and it's, it's basically <laughs> that. It's, there's that, yeah. so much information that you don't even know you don't no, know. You don't. I keep on learning every single day. Of course, we all make mistakes. And that's yeah. the crucial thing mm. is to make as much mistakes as possible and learn from your mm. colleagues' mistakes as well. But it's also important not to make the same mistakes. So every time you do make a mistake, at least you learn yeah. from it. Because yeah. everyone makes mistakes. I make mistakes yeah. to, to this day. So some of my older partners who are 65 years old, they even make mistakes as well. But it's it's crucial that they know how to recover from those mistakes. Yeah. And it's crucial that they don't make those mistakes yeah. uh, again. So yeah. I think from that perspective, that's what these these future CAs need to take into consideration mm. when they go through the ropes of, of becoming a, a CA to a, a audit firm mm. such as uh, such as yeah. Bazaar's. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think one of the things that I say to, to my students, because, you know, there's, I th- with, the, with the changes in, in becoming an RA and the requirements, et cetera, in, in, in South Africa, I think it, it started becoming a little bit even less desirable to be an audit partner because of additional requirements. Fine. Um, and then, to be honest, when most students start studying auditing, they're a little bit like, yeah, I don't want to be an auditor. So I realize it's not the most exciting concept on, on the face of the earth. Fine. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, what I, what I say to, to so many of my students is doing audit articles, whether you want to be an auditor or not, is like having a backstage pass into every single one of your clients' businesses. You know, mm-hmm. you have access to information that most of the employees and most of the people working there, even the managers will never see and will never have. You're sitting in meetings with the financial director, with the CFO, with the CEO, even as a junior, even if you're just sitting there taking minutes, whatever. um, That exactly as you say, you're never going to have access to that breadth of information. And if you're just sitting there going like, oh, you know, and I've got like 25 sales invoices that I have to check or whatever, um, you're not going to take that up. But if you go in there looking for exposure, looking for if I ran this business, what would I do differently? How would I solve that problem? What are they doing? How does that work? That doesn't look dodd, you know. Yeah. And then go back and talk to people and you audit, like, how does that work? I'm not okay with that. Does that make sense? Why would they do that? Did it, um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Articles can very easily be like a black hole of disaster that you lose yourself in because there's a lot of work and a lot of it does feel yeah. trudgy when you're doing it, especially at lower levels. Um, but it is it is totally it is totally what what you make of it. But it's got to be it's got to be something active. I think what's also important to I maybe just topping on one of the things you say with audit. So as you grow, like audit in articles, if you don't like audit, then articles you're not going to like it as well. But mm. what's interesting, and I'm an audit partner, but the amount of audit work that I do is still probably maybe 20 to 30 percent of the work that i do uh, yeah. in, in total so there's a lot of consulting that happens there's a lot of business development meeting with clients mm. uh, meeting interesting people so you think audit when you get to the end of third you think and you might have thought yes this wasn't for me um, yeah. i'm not spending I'm, I'm done i'm leaving i'm leaving now 
<laughs> maybe I'll take a secondment to, to overseas or whatever, but I'm done with auditing. Yeah. But then as you start to progress through the ropes and mm. then it becomes more challenging, there's different aspects where mm. it starts becomes really, really fun. Of course, extremely stressful environment, but I mean, you'll be used to it from the stress from the studies, but mm. extremely stressful environment, but, but it's also good fun. And there's a hell of a lot of flexibility that goes with audit as well, as opposed to being in, in commerce. If, if I go back to something you said earlier is, you you kind of went to your firm and said, here's something interesting. Can we do something about it? So it wasn't just a natural path of, oh, there was an opening in the, you know, in the digital asset division and you kind of slipped into that. You created it. And that's a different, yeah. that's not a skill set you were taught in the textbook, but to have that mindset and the, taking the risk, because it is a bit yeah. scary. You know, you're obviously going to be making a lot of mistakes because you're dealing to a large extent in uncharted territory and you have to be okay Correct. with that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting that instead of just, uh, I'm just going to be the guy signing off financial statements, we can be people creating, innovating, creating new departments, creating new, new stuff. Um, but that, that must have been, that must have been a little, a little scary to move into that <laughs> space because it, it had so, to be fairly lonely as well. So, so yeah, and it, and it is still fairly lonely, um. Yeah, so I think I was, I've told my wife probably the only one I've told the story. But when I when I went to this to the management board and, and the head of audit, and they said, okay, let let's see if if we can go down this path. I literally created a folder in my in my inbox and I called it digital asset department. There was no digital asset department. <laughs> okay. So everything and anything that I was about to focus on went there. And, I, and as I started working, we started working with Revex. Revex was the first client. Of course, I was a new partner. Um, and of course, as a new partner, you get you get all the, the jobs that just come in. And, and this came across yes. my desk. And of course, I had yeah. invested a bit of Bitcoin back in 2017, just before the boom. Um, so I had a little bit of understanding and I had a background mm. of financial services. So from there, I went out and I met with Sean Sanders, the, the CEO of Revex. Uh, and I started uh, chatting to him. And we, we started to, to see how we can put it because he wanted to to meet up cryptocurrency with his accounting because he needs to have accounting uh, records for, for yes. what the client can yes. achieve. Yeah. So we started to consult him from that point of view. Then they got an external cons uh, external accountant and we started consulting with them as well. Then I still remember it was the blockchain conference in 2020, the start of 2020. Um, and I was sitting there and I was seeing all these crypto related um, businesses. And I think, geez, and I thought, still thinking if I can get Luna as a client, that, that would be amazing. Um, and 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 COVID hit, the pandemic hit, and uh, working from home, and you wouldn't believe it. And of course, through this, I was doing the course to MIT to upskill myself yeah, to understand right. yeah, yeah. related. And um, and across my desk came came Luno, uh, oh, wow. and they were looking for for new auditors. Um, and they were situated in Singapore, of course, but was always being a global firm through yeah. the UK, through South Africa, the Johannesburg office to Cape Town. Eventually, they, they heard that I had some expertise or experience with cryptocurrency. Oh, okay, so they kind of hunted you down. So not to a certain extent. So it was, of course, through Mazars. They wanted yeah, to yeah, approach yeah. Mazars, but then they, within Mazars internally, we, we had to say, but do we have the expertise yes, to service of course. them? Yeah, of course, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll get back to, to the audit requirements of that. Mm. So, of course, I did the course to MIT. So I had the basic fundamental. Mm. I'm, I'm like a newly qualified uh, uh uh, we can call it trainee again i've got yeah, the yeah, theoretical yeah. knowledge but i haven't got the practical knowledge so yeah. of course i had to to spend endless nights on the computer researching different aspects on cryptocurrency right and, back to cta and how the technology <laughs> works and, and there's a hell of a lot to, to know about this if you yeah. ask me now to to explain stuff to you it's it's not like a, a week course or maybe just like an hour and a half session there's masses oh, and I, masses of information yeah. going into that so yeah. and then we started to build from there and as soon as we got luna in we actually gained traction and then it started accumulating okay so now we've got credentials to to back us as well yeah. so then we start saying to people well look we are servicing these guys in this industry uh are you able to, or are we able to provide you with yeah, quite as well? right. a lot of startups well you need to to wheel and deal a bit, mm. um, different type of products you start mm -hmm. looking at, and mm -hmm. then it started to explode from there. And then, of course, from as well as being an international firm, then I started working with other offices as well because they get these opportunities yeah. in the US, in Germany, in Bermuda, mm. in the Caymans, in Singapore, or whatever. And and slowly but surely you start to build and you, you do stuff, you discount your fees and certain extent, yeah. you start gaining that experience uh, on yeah. certain elements. But it's grown to such an element now that we've upskilled ourselves, of course bringing the world of, of audit and finance but to be, together with cryptocurrency of course required a, a lot of uh, mm. research but 
Mm. Also to having a firm understanding of everything relating to the audit accounting and tax. I mean, if you think about it from an auditing point of view, you need to make sure that you get the same type of assurance yes. that you would with any type of other thing. Let's say, for example, when we looked at stuff like, um, let's say you, you have, you, you've got a Bitcoin balance sitting on your balance sheet, how do we audit it? Mm. And to actually think about your assertion, think of your balance mm -hmm. sheet, think of your income statement assertion, make sure you know your assertion to where you're going to gain your assurance and yeah. you can prove without a doubt yeah. that that is the What's fact. What's your I'm evidence? Trying, yeah. Correct. I try mm -hmm. to look at it from a fraud point of view always as mm -hmm. well. So oh, if yeah. I would have had to commit fraud, how would I how? do it? Yeah. I'd, I'd make sure I design procedures to address those assertions right. to make sure that someone isn't able to overstate. Yeah, got to think like a criminal. Populate. Exactly, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good analogy. And then yeah. even from an accounting point of view, so now you've got this new asset class and now you need to fit it into somewhere into the accounting yeah. frameworks as well. Yeah. So yeah. Forth, you think immediately as a measure of financial instruments, yeah. not financial instruments, yeah. it's not equity of another company, yeah. there's no contractual agreement, yeah. it's not cash as defined. So there's, uh, there's it out of the windows. Now you start need, need to, to, to know your standards. Where else can mm. I fit this in? Mm. And of course, it, it does require a lot of research as well because there's a lot of interpretation. Because IFRS is IFRS, but there are certain interpretations yes. that go yes. along with it as well. Yeah, um, yeah. the more that, that you, that you, the more that you understand that, the, the, the less hard and fast, the less hard and fast that is. Guys are now, you know, coming out of their studies and obviously getting more yeah. practical experience with digital assets because because they're working with you. So I'm, I'm assuming obviously your department is is more than just you. So guys are now, you know, young, getting more on the job experience as trainees. How are you yeah. finding? How are you finding they adjust to that? Given that it's not in the syllabus at all, do, do you find that they're prepared for 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 the stuff that you require them to do, or you kind of have to teach again or it's it, it's actually it's it's not that difficult and the reason why i say this if if you understand the fundamentals the fundamentals doesn't doesn't change mm. so of course i had to first understand everything so most of the audit work as a partner i did myself mm. then i started to upskill the managers and the mm. manager understands what doing, and now we're starting to upskill mm. the the supervisors and the staff below them but mm. it's it's extremely basic if you think about it it's what we have essentially with cryptocurrencies, and, I'll, and let's just focus on cryptocurrency, not digital assets. Where you have cryptocurrencies, and you have something like a blockchain, such as such as the Bitcoin network, for example. So you've got you've got accounts, such as bank accounts. You've got private keys, such as bank account pins. Mm. You've got transactions occurring on your statement, that is transaction IDs. The only difference with blockchain, for example, is that it's open source. And it's, mm. it's available to everyone on the internet. Of course, there's pseudo anonymous aspect, aspects to it. So you don't know who runs what address. Mm. But exactly the same principles. Right? If you understand how a ledger works, then you yeah. understand blockchain cryptocurrency. Yeah. Because all blockchain is from a ledger perspective is mm. opening balance, closing balance, and debits and credit. That's yeah. that's all that goes into the ledger at the end of the day. Of course, where, with the whole mining process, is coin based mm. transaction. Mm -hmm. But for every output, input, there's an output. For every debit, there's a credit. Yeah. So you know, the fundamentals is exactly the same but of course it gets a bit tricky when we start about things like how do you how do you obtain a value um mm, mm. how do you harvest transactions from the blockchain to aggregate mm. to get to a balance how do you prove ownership through cryptographic message signing so all of that starts to, to build so as, as soon as you start building the basics yeah you start right, you can adding that. to that but yeah but all, all all goes down to that self-learning doing that right. research as well when they are when these guys listening to this will be chart accountants when your short account doesn't stop there, of course, you need to have your, your CPD as well. You need yeah. to, to advance yourself and up your skill, mm, upskill mm, yourself mm, and other mm. aspects. So, so basically, that's just it's just a mindset uh, yeah, that you need right. to, to, yeah. to, to undergo when you start working with cryptocurrency. Yeah. But the penny will eventually drop. It will drop. I think the, um, when I look at how, how a lot of students study because of the volumes of work and because of, you know, because of a lot of other challenges, et cetera, et cetera, um, Part of the challenge, I think, is that they, they, they don't really realize that the stuff that they're learning are underlying concepts and principles um, that you're going to have to use in a whole bunch of different ways. So I think, you know, historically, we're used to learning things as this is what it is, this is what it looks like, and it will always look the same way wherever I use it. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of talk to my students about the difference between learning and understanding stuff as, as, as clay versus crystal. There's no point in building yeah. a beautiful crystal glass. You can't do anything with it. You need to work yeah. with clay and, and maneuver it and manipulate it and, and, and build stuff. So, yeah, I think when, when you're studying, the requirement is be open-minded, understand and try and build a visual of what this is because 
as you say, the stuff itself is fairly basic when you explain it, but if you're not able to, to, to visualize the fundamentals of a, of, of a financial instrument, then you're dealing with new on unfamiliar anyway. And so, you know, things, um, th things are still fairly, things are still fairly unfamiliar. <laughs> they kind of fall you apart. Can, you can think of it from a tax point of view as well. Like everyone asks the question, everyone loves yeah. asking questions about tax yeah. and cryptocurrencies, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got these set rules and you just, you just slot mm. whatever a cryptocurrency does and moves like, so whatever in there, of course, there are some extremely technical things. Yeah. The cryptocurrency yeah. Where the tax act hasn't yet yes. evolved beyond it, but a lot of countries of course hasn't, but you need to apply your judgment, your experience, what you've seen over the years and how this fits into the to the income tax act. The same, yeah. same principles apply. But as you mentioned, it goes back to the fact that you need to understand what the, you're doing. the 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 standards, understand mm. the laws or whatever to make mm. sure that you're applying it correctly. Yeah. So um is your practice and is your life more interesting than you thought it would be when you're studying? Definitely. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> Look, I think there's there's certain aspects of it um, that I thought myself, geez, this is mundane or boring or whatever yeah. the case may be. But it's to to deal with people. I think that that's the greatest yeah. thing when yeah, you right. and they don't prepare you for that to 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 actually to negotiate audit fees, to assist mm. clients uh, solving problems and those types of things to talk about random things or whatever and to assist with other departments say with with be scorecards and whatever mm. the case so mm. it, it goes about that things there's a lot of things in the textbook that that you're not prepared for at at, uh, at, at yeah. this level but yeah um i think all, all together i think in retrospect i don't think my life would be this exciting experience. people won't believe it when i'm saying already is exciting life but I'm <laughs> If you come sit with me probably for a week or whatever, there's a hell of a lot of exciting things happening in, yeah. the, in my industry, in my space. And you said, what is an ever-changing environment? Uh, it is becoming extremely technical with all the new laws and regulations yeah. being uh, yeah. implemented every single year. But there's a reason for that. There's a reason because why why our regulators want to implement this because what has happened in the past and they want to try to avoid this happening. Mm, because mm. that's the thing that we keep on forgetting as an auditor. The, the role that you're trying to facilitate here is to protect the man on the street. I always had this saying that you can steal from anyone as long as you don't steal from poor people or old people. But now I've, I've had the view that... That's not sure that the anyone. CPC quite <laughs> has the same approach to that, but okay. <laughs> but um, I but yeah, reason, so <laughs> you, you've got an obligation to protect yeah. the shoulders and the right. stakeholders. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. that's essentially what we're doing, and, and I yeah. mean that's what we've been achieving with with Luna's proof of reserve report. We'll be actually going because there's been a hell of a lot of stories about scams of individuals that we had in trading international, where it was just cryptocurrency that disappeared, but there wasn't any proper accounting records or anything yeah. old or whatever. Yeah. So for every debit was their credit, and there wasn't. Now for Luna, for example, we issue these uh, agreed upon procedures. Um, in terms of the standard, of course, the auditing standard, uh, I think ISRE 2400 or 4400, I'm not sure. But in any case, so we issue these reports that we go and we verify that the cryptocurrency that Lua actually holds exists on chain or with a custody solution. And of course, that the corresponding liability doesn't uh, exceed the, the assets being all day. Mm. So, and, and that gives people reassurance. They can actually mm -hmm. go onto mm -hmm. Luna's website and they can have a look at an independent party, verify that all the cryptocurrency is actually there. It's not sitting in. Uh, somewhere overseas and some of the expropriated or take, yeah, misappropriated yeah. all the funds or something of that sort. So you need to understand the role that we as auditors need to play in South yeah. Africa from all the stakeholders' perspective. Yeah. yeah. Quick um, quick question for, for, for my auditing students because I do, you know, I, I do specialize in lecturing auditing. Do you use the auditing standards? <laughs> Every single day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm in office today, actually, but uh, on my desk, uh, is my IFRA standards and my right. auditing standards as well. So you, when you're a student, when you read it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and you try to to, to, to visualize yeah. what it is you're trying to do yeah. when you're reading certain things. But when you're in practice, it actually, you'll be surprised with the amount of... of, of, uh, of it's the like a daily that. manual. Yeah. Exactly. And, and as you exactly. say, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating. You're taking something completely new, but it's not like there's a cryptocurrency standard auditing standard. So you're taking something exactly. that's written for a whole bunch of stuff and you're able to use it to apply it no. to something, you know, that, that, that didn't exist. Because you're right. One of the struggles that I have is a lot of my students are like, well, the auditing standards aren't practical. Or nobody really uses them. Or um, <clears throat> so, so it's good to know yeah. that. You've got yours sitting on <laughs> sitting on the side of the desk. <laughs> no, it is, and you, and more you than just a paperweight. 
like I was literally sitting with a conversation yesterday uh, and I um, was dealing with a client that had an uh, intangible asset, cryptocurrency is intangible asset because that's one of the areas that fits in. So we were chatting about the impairment of it. And um, I said, but you look at the, the various, they say the various purchases of cryptocurrencies are all those purchases adding up to a total. That's the intangible asset. When you test for impairment, you test it on an aggregate basis or do you mm. test the individual line items? And um, the IFRS experts that I spoke to, they said, yo, but you have to look at the, uh, the, the cash generating unit. Mm. But then I, I said, well, just remember, or the smallest cash generating unit, and I, I specifically read the, mm. the uh, mm. but it talk, spoke about the group of assets on the definition of a cash yeah. generating unit. Yes, yes. But then I said to the IFRS expert, but just remember, cryptocurrency doesn't generate cash. It's not, there's no fruit and tree principle no. here. It's just no. an asset that, that's no. bought for speculative purposes. So she's like, oh, okay. Okay, so it's not so you. Thank you to global influence group. So tomorrow morning, I'm sitting with all the influence experts in South Africa to, to, to hear what the, yeah. the opinion is okay. on that and to see whether you uh, do the impairment assessment on an individual basis or on a group basis. Yeah. But, and, and just small, small things like that, for example, every single day you get to a point and you think, hmm, geez, I haven't thought about it. Let's go to the standard. And I never thought in my life I'd be reading my um Voluntarily. My that much. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So I've still, I've still got my standards with me. I've still got my flags at the back here. I've actually, there's my, my tax textbooks there. I've got my oh, uh, wow. my group statements as well. So mm. everything is still here. You still use it on a, on, yeah. a, on a daily basis. It's yeah. flagged from when I was a student. So you still use it every single day. And you'll be surprised how much you use it, especially in an audit environment mm. where you deal with very technical matters as opposed to a financial manager, which is more, uh, maybe focus on the operational side of the business as opposed mm. to the financial mm. side of the business. Yeah. So if um, if there was one skill or set of skills that you wish they had included in your studies, and let's exclude articles because obviously articles are like your practical. So let's let's focus on the academic components. If there were one set of skills that you kind of wish, you know, like people say at school, it would have been really, really good if they taught us how to do our tax returns instead of um, algebra, because nobody uses yeah. algebra. <laughs> we don't care about I trigonometry. Use algebra. I use okay, use algebra. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just me then. <laughs> Tell you my CPD is <laughs> Okay. Bad example. Moving on. <laughs> So, so, but so, so I, I know exactly what you want to ask, and I've been through this. But from an algebra point of view, if you think about something like what yeah, is the right. growth method under financial yeah. management, so you get you get your your variables, you, you got your unknown, you need to rework. It's algebra. Yeah, you're right, right. You don't even that was a bad example. It, Coming from me, <laughs> who needs, I use my iPhone to calculate the restaurant bill. You know. <laughs> So but so there is one area that I wish that I knew more about, and that would definitely be computer programming. The, okay. For the life of me, there's, um, of course, dealing in the space, dealing in the in the fintech space and, and with cryptocurrency, it would be fantastic to be able to run a node and write programs to of, of, mm. of, of extract the information myself. Mm. But of, com- of course, from the get-go, uh, or to, to be able to read and write smart contracts. And mm. unfortunately, um, I didn't learn that skill at varsity. We just had yeah. um, uh, infos as well. I think infos one, two, and three, mm-hmm. where we learned basic things about about Excel. So that's one of the the areas that I wish I'd learned more about. Yeah. And there is definitely going to be a niche market for yeah. um, right. individuals with these sets of schools. Of course, we've got IT auditors, but usually they have got an IT background as, a, as opposed to yeah. a financial background. Yeah. We do have these limited instances where we've got chartered accountants in the IT audit but, department. Yeah. So that, that's one of the areas uh, that that's that's definitely uh, going to be. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's something that 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 psycho and the professions trying to address with CA twenty twenty five as well. Correct, right? digital, correct. That's my understanding as well. Yeah, correct. Um, so it may be something that students are going to find in their syllabus going forward at some point in time. Because the volume exactly. of work you have is not enough. <laughs> so it's like super uh, you're hundred percent right. But so, the, the, and of course, the other thing is is that major is stress management as well, because okay. you are always on to concentrate. And if you don't understand how to manage your stress as well, you're going to be caught up. Mm. Um, so that's if I can give advice to anyone, it is a high stress environment, and you need to learn to manage your stress to have a balanced lifestyle uh it's yeah. extremely important you, you hear about balanced lifestyle when you're at varsity and when you go to articles or whatever and you never thought actually what what does it what mean to, to to be able to and i always had this thing when i was sort of uh, going through the ropes of managing senior manager i was here at six o'clock in the mornings i left at six in the evening so i had a 12-hour work day 
But on a Friday, one o'clock, I closed my laptop or I was off and I didn't work over weekends unless yeah. there was extremely urgent situation to attend to. So you need to understand how to balance things yeah. as well. Yeah, um, so that's, and you're that's right. I think, I think a lot of students kind of think once all my exams are over, you know, then I won't have that stress anymore. Performance anxiety won't exist. But I think performance anxiety is worse as a professional because someone's paying your bills and you're required to perform and there's no such thing as 50 percent is good enough to pass you know right. you got you got to be there you got to be doing your stuff you got to be doing and, and solving the problem so yeah. I, I agree with you i think uh, more focus needs to be given to how to manage how to manage stressful situations how to help and manage other people because you're now responsible for you know you're now leading a team of people so you can't be yeah. losing you know you can't be losing your temper nor can you lock yourself in your office and be doing all the technical stuff without exactly. the awareness of growing and developing and managing the people around you as well. Exactly. It's, uh, exactly. it's, far, it's far broader. <clears throat> Before we leave, do you have any, if you have any advice for, for students currently, you know, currently on, on their journey, first of all, would you advise them to get into digital assets or run screaming? Um, <laughs> and what, what advice would you give them for, for their studies? I think, First of all, they need to figure out what, what they like because it, it, it would have to be horrible to come to work every day and not do what okay. I love. I, mm-hmm. I don't even know what it would be like. Mm-hmm. I've been with Mazars for 12 years. I've experienced other firms internationally. I've experienced a bit of commerce as well. But I know for a fact what I do every single day and I love it. And and mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've had uh, other opportunities presented to me over the last years. I've had a lot of uh, job offers as well, working in, in the cryptocurrency digital asset space where there's a, a, a need for individuals mm. such as myself. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm sticking in auditing because mm. this is what I do and, and this is what I love. So it's, it's first to, to find your passion in, in life in terms of what you want to do and what you want to achieve and where do you see yourself going. Um, that's also a journey, think, right? That's not, that's not like I'm going to come out of CTA and know that this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to come out of you know being qualified it's a bit of a journey to, to find yeah, that. It's, and, it's, and, yeah. So if and you don't have it right now, breathe. <laughs> no, and you, you know? as, a, as an individual change. Yes, exactly. years, you think you're a grown-up when you're 18 and then you're 21. You think you're a grown-up. You're 25 and you think you're a grown-up. And you're 13, you think you're a grown-up. And you're 35. And you think you're, <laughs> I'm, 30, I'm 35 years old now. I don't still see myself as a grown-up. No, I mean, I've I got know. certain obligations to do whatever. I'm, I'm living the grown-up lifestyle. But, but in your I mind, you're still 21, wanted, right? <laughs> Exactly. What I wanted yeah. five or ten years ago is completely different to to what I to I currently want. And so allow that, it, yeah, allow the flexibility of that. Exactly, and and so it's not just to be set in your ways. And this is this is how you're going to operate, and this is what it's going to be like forever. Mm-hmm. So I think just to keep that in mind, um, mm-hmm. but also just always not to be satisfied with with what you're getting. Uh, my father uh, always had a saying. He said. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always, always gotten, have, and too, and yeah. and that's that's a philosophy that by what I live by. Except for if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But mm. th- those two aspects is is always something that I take with me, and, and mm. which I apply to my everyday life and even my personal life as well. So I mean, from that perspective, if you if you're going through this journey and 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 go through, it's, it's try always to achieve greatness and never try mm. to be just mediocre and just do what you're supposed to. Do. If you always going for the next thing and that's another thing that also my father taught me is you have to experience three great things in a year so always set out and say this is what i want to achieve i want to mm-hmm. pass my cta this year i want to um i want to be promoted to uh, assistant ma- uh, uh, or maybe order trainee level two or mm-hmm. i want to move out of my parents house and, and, mm. and go live on my own or whatever always set those those benchmarks for yourself that you're always working towards a point as as opposed to just floating around and, and 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 not really having a direction because you always need a plan. And my wife hated me when we started dating. And I always told her, you need a plan. You need a plan and you need to work towards a plan. And and always, I've always got a plan in terms of where I'm working towards and, yeah. and what I want to achieve. And, and that's that's maybe, I think, the biggest thing that I want to leave for the, with the future CA is always to have that plan and, and to work towards a goal that, mm. that you want to yeah. achieve. Because but also I've, be aware that as you get exposed to, and it's, it's advisable to expose yourself to different situations. The plan may change and that's allowed. Don't stick to a plan just for the sake of it because you developed the plan when you were 21 and now you're like, I must do it otherwise. So exactly. allow for the fact, exactly as you said, as you change, as you develop, as you grow, as you get exposed to more stuff, as the world changes, allow for the fact that the plan may change and could change and maybe it should change. That's okay. You know, that's okay as well. 
and that plays hand in hand about making mistakes. You can make a mistake. Yeah. Whatever. Let's say I went down this route and I wanted to try the devil in the digital asset space and it, it didn't work out. Then it would have been a little bit of lost time, but I yeah. can move on from there again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have wasted time on, on certain things that I could have moved on for. And, mm. and, and, and no one listening to, to, to this uh, video blog can say that they haven't wasted time in trying something new. Or yeah. And if they haven't, uh, they haven't to done be quite honest, now. a bit cliche, you haven't lived there. Because yep. then it's all about making mistakes, as I said. Yeah. And of course, mistakes yeah. you can come back from, not mistakes that you can't come back from, like committing fraud or something of that sort. But Fair enough. Yeah, let's but, not get that experimental. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but make those mistakes. That it's yeah. important to make those mistakes. Yeah. And obviously, a question we, we we have to ask is: so what? Um, you know, what should we be investing in? What's going to make us money? <laughs> so first of all, I need to tell you that I'm not a financial advisor, and I can't do okay. advice. Crypto disclaimer, currency. disclaimer, disclaimer. Fair enough. Crypto now, so is, a, money. is an unregulated financial product, and no one is able to provide you oh, advice on cryptocurrency. So come that's important. On. But the most important thing is that I always all people ask me, "What do you look at?" Because of course, I've invested in cryptocurrency as well. So people ask me, "What do you look at?" You need to understand the technology, and you want to mm. have a look if the cryptocurrency or the asset class you're investing on as underlying technology. To give an example, I'm not going out buying uh, meme coins or something of that sort because mm. that, that's a lot of hype that it builds up. And you need to look at the underlying technology. Look at something like Bitcoin, for example. Mm. It has certain characteristics when it comes to the amount of it or to be an issue, the security that goes along with it, the scalability that goes along with it. So that, those are things. But you look at something like a, I'm just going to say no, no, like the donkey coin or whatever. It's a meme coin. So there's only a certain amount of donkey coin issue, but it has no functionality yeah. whatsoever. It's a collectible. So right. Yeah, I so remember look crypto at the underlying were like a huge thing a while back. And so your client comes to you and says they've invested in crypto kitties. <laughs> 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 but, but some of these things are good like I, i'm not a biggest fan about non-nfts NFT, uh, yeah. because i don't believe that they 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 have any intrinsic value they're just collectibles mm. once again mm, but right. it's like and i and i was speaking on a podcast on money web um uh, i think it came out yesterday or the day before yesterday and what i said there is it's important for you to to learn about these things and play mm. with around like nfts mm. and it's important for you to, to for us to play with Lego and, and play Rummy Cup because it teaches your mind to think a certain way. And the same yeah. with NFTs and these meme coins, you start to understand how the technology operates. And then, of course, you can utilize it for other business ideas yeah. or to understand yeah. cryptocurrencies in, in, a, in a bigger aspect in the future. So it's important to, to play around with things as well to start to understand it. But even though it doesn't have a, a, a real functionality mm, in, in mm. your life i don't people are gonna uh, gonna stone me for saying that nfts i think it's worth this but i mean that that's my opinion that's yeah. what the space is all about is it's yeah. extremely opinionated and everyone is allowed to have the opinion and that's the great thing yeah 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 fair enough okay so is there anything else that you want to chat about before but before we go because i don't want to take up too much of your time get you back to those financial statements this is probably the, the thought that I'd leave you with. And, and it's interesting, of course, being in an audit firm, I've had, met a hell of a lot of other CAs throughout my 13 year span here at Mazars, mm -hmm. you know, my clients, my fellow CAs and fellow Mazarians or, or whatever the case may be. Is, and if I look at the, the avenues that all of them took in terms of what they're doing now, They've taken a hell of a lot of different avenues. Don't yeah. think you're going to be in a financial yes. uh, oh. uh, uh, route the rest of your life if you become a CEO. You might be right. the CEO of a, of a large corporation one day, and that fundamentals. And once again, then you've got your your degree that was your fundamental, and you, you became a CEO. But now, mm. being a CEO and all the experience you gain is going to be your fundamental basis, mm. and you're going to build from mm. there, you, and you're going to understand mm. other aspects of businesses, how to enter markets, those things. But it's important for you to to learn all of these different things out there. Mm. And you can do anything. I've fellow CIs that are in marketing, some of them became politicians, some yeah, of them yeah. became uh, their own uh, uh, owners of their own businesses, some of them became financial managers. Um, they've, they've scattered all over the yeah. world and they do every weird and wonderful thing you can, can think of. It's, it's doing what, finding what you love and, and yeah. building your career around that yeah. is, is what's going to be yeah. important. And I think the value is the profession, having that qualification gives you a very strong base to, to, to allow you to build your career and build the type of career and lifestyle that you want. You know, um, it gives you a nice, you know, it gives you a nice leverage. It gives you a nice starting point. But let, let's be honest, the reality is that the qualification itself is a starting point. There's no, you know, by exactly. no means is that the, 
spoiler alert, guys, once you're qualified, things just get tougher. <laughs> <coughs> it's not, <laughs> it is not the easy ride you were promised. Sorry. <laughs> No, but not, nothing in life comes easy. No, but it is but, way more yeah. interesting because you're sitting up spending time studying, you know, and studying about, you know, cryptocurrency and digital assets, but you're not resenting it. You know, you're not sitting there going, oh, I hate my life. I hate everything about it. I don't want to touch this stuff. You're doing it because it's interesting. It's engaging. You want to learn more about it. And um, that's the value of learning further beyond, exactly. you know, beyond the exams. So Exactly. So that's cool. Just having that curious mind. It's extremely important. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to send you all my students who um, who think that auditing is difficult so that you can you can fix them. Oh, yeah. And definitely all my accounting students who are struggling with financial instruments. I am definitely sending them your way because apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently financial instruments are super easy. So I'll send them in your direction. <laughs> Oh, I think if we do something a, a, a lot, then the easier it becomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I would. I wish I would have. We could have talked just about accounting and audit and all that. But uh, usually, the, the people, the industry that I operate in, uh, I bore them to death if I talk about auditing, accounting. Yeah, but it's a, it's so, a passion. I have exactly the same thing about the stuff that I'm passionate about. Is I can talk for hours about the stuff, and people are eventually like, "Is she leaving anytime soon?" Because <laughs> this is getting a little much. So uh, we were all going to have that passion, and I. Hope Hope that people do because that's what yeah. makes life that what makes life exciting is finding your particular passion and, and, and whatever you do so so yeah thank exactly. you thank you very much for your time i really appreciate it and um yeah maybe we'll have uh maybe we'll have some more discussions on this and, and maybe focus a little bit more on on, on the technical stuff because i think it is something obviously it's a you know it's, it's something that's not really in the syllabus but you know things have to move things have to change um so yeah i, I really appreciate your time thank you Sure, only a pleasure. Yo, let's chat about the accounting and the audit because that's where it gets interesting. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some serious revision. I'm going to have to have my little Everest notes on side Googling. <laughs> Test ahead. <Yes. laughs> awesome, Bian. Thanks very much for your time. Have, have an oh. awesome day and good luck with those financials. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll chat again. Cool.